When most people think of pollen, they probably think of allergies and runny noses. While pollen may be the source of our sneezes, it's also the source of our food. Pollen contains sperm, which fertilizes plants, allowing them to reproduce. What ends up on our dinner plates begins when a pollen grain lands on a plant's stigma. Soon after, the pollen grain germinates into a pollen tube, which is a true hero of our story. The pollen tube is an incredible single cell focused entirely on delivering two sperm cells to the plant's ovule. To arrive at the ovule, the pollen tube undergoes tip growth, which is a form of unidirectional cell growth. This is a rather exceptional process, considering that the cell can grow over a thousand times its original length in just a few hours. In fact, pollen tubes are the fastest recording extending cells. After the pollen tube has traveled the entire length of the plant's style, it arrives at the ovule, which contains the egg and central cell. Once here, the pollen tube bursts and releases the two sperm cells for a process called double fertilization. One of the sperm fuses with the egg, creating the embryo that will become the new plant. The other sperm fuses with the central cell, which develops into the endosperm a nutrient-rich tissue that supports the development of the embryo. This is what we eventually will eat. Wheat endosperm is ground into flour for bread, and the endosperm of corn are the kernels that we eat directly off the cob. These products are global food staples, and we depend heavily on them in order to feed our planet's growing population. As we've seen, the growth of the pollen tube transports the sperm to the plant's ovule where fertilization occurs. Fertilization allows a plant, whether it's corn, wheat, or another crop, to start growing. So, the success of the pollen tube's journey from stigma to ovule is essential for our food supply system. If this cellular journey goes wrong, we cannot produce major crops, such as corn, rice, wheat, and tomatoes. The growth of the pollen tube is temperature sensitive, so climate change poses a great risk to our food supply. Out of all plant cells, pollen tubes are the most temperature sensitive. In fact, a pollen tube that is fully functional at a certain temperature might be unable to locate the ovule at a temperature only a few degrees higher, resulting in a completely sterile plant. For instance, experiments have shown that the pollen tubes of corn and wheat grown at 30 degrees Celsius. 86 degrees Fahrenheit, were unable to successfully complete double fertilization. Climate scientists predict that global temperatures may rise between 2 and 6 degrees Celsius by the year 2100. So in many places where corn and wheat are grown, the threshold temperature of 30 degrees Celsius will likely be crossed by the end of the century. This puts us at risk of losing some of our staple foods. So what can we do to protect our food supply? One solution would be to halt climate change by greatly reducing our emission of greenhouse gases, such as carbon dioxide. However, at this point, climate change has progressed so far that it may not be possible to save our crops. Instead, scientists are working to engineer thermotolerant crops. To do this, more research needs to be done to understand how each step of the pollen tube journey could be engineered to be more heat resistant. So the next time you sneeze or eat a piece of pizza, be sure to think about the mighty pollen tube and the scientists working hard to protect its incredible journey.